So, hey, internet. This is Nate. You can also call me Nathan. Please never call me Nathaniel. Uh, welcome to my definitive guide on all things vampire survivors weapons. We're going to cover in this part one um, the first, I think it's seven-ish weapons. Uh, it's going to be a three-part at first with a fourth part once all of the final weapons are released in the game. Um, and we're going to follow a very similar format. So first thing, to get it out of the way, a um, lot of stats in weapons. Hopefully this is pretty legible. But I want to explain what all these different things mean so there's no confusion around when we talk about a different um, stat... What does that mean? So basic stats, damage, pretty straightforward. Area, straightforward. Speed, the same. Amount, I think all these ones are pretty similar. One of the ones that's not so common, penetration. So that is how many enemies a single projectile will hit before that projectile goes away. So keep that in mind. It's relevant for some things. One of the types of penetration you'll also see is AOE, area of effect. That means that it will penetrate every single enemy within that area. Then you have cooldown reduction. The only thing to note about cooldown reduction that may not be really clear to people is that the trigger for the cooldown happens after the weapon's duration ends. So it's not from the start of the weapon, it's from the end of the duration. So things like um, Bible are affected like that. Things like, uh, yeah, like all, all these things that have duration um, high durations. The cooldown starts when the duration is over. Then you have duration itself. That's how long the weapon's effect lasts. You have interval. Interval is the time between projectiles. So if you have a weapon that has multiple projectiles like knife, axe, uh, holy wand, fire wand, any of these, the interval will be the time in between projectiles. And that can't be modified by any stat. You have delay. Delay only affects a handful of weapons, and what it does is it's the time between damage ticks for the same projectile on the same weapon. So take, for example, like Garlic or Holy Bible. They have a tick delay so that if the same unit is getting hit by the same Bible, it actually won't get hit immediately. There's a delay, but it could get hit by, for example, other Bibles, right? So those are different projectiles hitting the same enemy. They will be able to hit instantaneously, but the same projectile on the same enemy has a delay. Okay, knockback, it's the distance of the knockback effect. Most have a knockback of one or a half, um, but some weapons have a higher knockback. Uh, maximum projectiles, this is one that I wasn't even aware of. I kind of knew it just based on experience, but actually weapons have a maximum amount of projectiles that can be on screen at a time. And this will prevent your weapon from attacking another time. So if you've hit maximum projectiles and then you do another attack, your weapon will not be able to produce more projectiles and will skip that attack. Very common, you see this in things like um, Axe. You can sometimes see it in Vespers when you have enough Vespers. You can see it sometimes in, um, what's it called? Hellfire, if you have too many Hellfires on screen, then your next instance will not actually occur. You'll, you'll be limited in the projectiles. Chance, this depends on the weapon, whether there's a chance effect. Not all weapons have chance effects. Some do, some don't. And finally, is the weapon blocked by obstacles? This is blocked by walls. Okay, so here's all of the stat explana state explanations. I don't know why I said state. should be stat, but it's fine. Here's all the explanations of all the different things. Then I want to go into, this is the standard overview. So there will be an overall grade. This overall grade represents how good a weapon is at normal vampire survivors play. So this is just straight up, is this weapon good at helping you to survive for 30 minutes? Leaderboard pick rate is different. Leaderboard is, does this weapon show up in leaderboard builds across these different leaderboard areas. 
Um, if it's red, it means that weapon is not used for the leaderboard at all. If it's orange, it means that it is sometimes flexed into a leaderboard. And if it's green, it means that it is a meta pick for that leaderboard, um, that leaderboard area. Finally, strengths and weaknesses. This is just to kind of give some color to why there's an overall grade. Um, explaining why, you know, it's A, B, C, or D. So they're only going to go to A to D. There's no S tier. There's no F tier. Every weapon, I'll state this up front, every weapon can be used to get you to 30 minutes. Not all weapons are equally good at it. And it's important to understand where weapons are quite strong and where they're quite weak and try to combine weapons that maybe help deal with the weaknesses of other weapons. Okay. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started on the actual guide. Number one, whip. So starting from the left, um, whip evolves into bloody tear. Uh, in order to evolve it into bloody tear, you need to have the hollow heart. <laughs> thank you, thank you, please. It's too much. Um, base stats, damage 10, area one, uh, speed one. What you'll notice is these ones that are colored in gray, these are not affected by the, rel the respective items. So speed, duration, and chance are not affected um, by their relative bracer, uh, the spellbinder, and the increases in luck. Okay? Um, but everything else is. So damage area, amount, uh, cooldown, and so on are all affected. Uh, level up effects, you can see those down here at the middle. In general, what you'll see is you get the one extra whip attack, and then the, the rest of them are increases in damage and a little increase in area. Once it becomes evolved, the damage increases up to 40 damage. It's actually 10 higher than the maximum whip damage. The area gets slightly bigger. So you'll see it increased by 20% by levels. It increases an additional 10% when it evolves into bloody tier. The amount stays the same, speed stays the same. It's an AOE penetration, meaning that anything inside of the range of the whip will get hit by the full damage of the whip. It has a 1.35 second cooldown. That's pretty That's pretty low. Um, that means with full cooldown reduction, so if you're playing with Christine and you have full cooldown, that's 70% cooldown, you're looking at a 30% actual cooldown timer which is gonna be, yeah, roughly like 0.4 seconds. So under half a second in between. It has a 0.1 second interval between whip hits. Um, so even at max cooldown, what you can get, it's extremely rare, but if you have enough amounts, there actually is a slight overlap between whip hits, which is kind of interesting. Has a standard knockback of one, maximum projectiles. And what's really important is the bloody tier adds a crit chance so it's a 10% base chance to do two and a half damage. So uh, that would mean you would do base, with base damage, you would do 100 damage at um, if you crit strike with bloody tear. And then obviously that scales up with increased might. Uh, and the other major note is that it heals 8 HP when it strikes an enemy. Now what's important here as well is it's per attack not per projectile. So if you have like an amount four and your whip hits four enemies in one attack, it still only heals you eight HP. And if it hits nothing, you get no HP. So the max it can hit per attack is the eight HP. It's not per, it's not per uh, amount or per projectile. One other neat thing you can do with the whip um, is the way that it, it's positioned, we'll talk about this a little bit, um, it's very, it's pretty easy to position it because there's no RNG in the attack direction. Um, what that also means is uh, it's always going to attack based on your current direction. So if you actually move left and right fast enough, you can get the whip to actually hit all of its attacks on the same side because it's always going to be based on where your positioning is at the time of that projectile hit. You have to be really fast but you can actually get them all. And maybe we'll show that on stream sometime. Overall grade, I give it as a C. Um, so why do I give it a C? One, uh, on the strength side, and by the way, C is like average. This is an average weapon. It's not bad. 
So you see, oftentimes you see C and you think like, oh man, that's like a fail. It's not a fail, it's an average grade. And I think it's a good, like, kind of mid-level weapon. It has really high base damage, it has pretty decent sustain, and a very low cooldown. It also is not RNG, so you can always kind of decide where it's going to attack. And it has a pretty okay knockback. The reason why I put it at a C is one, it leaves you completely vulnerable to enemies that come from below. So if you're ever moving like in the forest, dairy plant, um, green acres, I mean, even the library to a certain extent, although in library you can protect yourself a little bit better, but in any of these open map areas, you're gonna have an entire direction that you cannot do anything about. You will not be able to hit enemies below you with the whip ever, which is a pretty big uh, negative, I think, for the whip. Otherwise, if it if it did have a kind of below hit, I think it would very easily be a B tier. It's really that one thing. The other part that's not so great um, is that it has a pretty bad accessory to combine with, right? So Hollow Heart increases your health by a percentage, not like super impactful in most runs to try to get to 30 minutes. Normally, if you're taking damage, you're gonna die regardless of how much damage you have. Like, it's all about, for the most part, can you prevent damage and can you kill things faster than they damage you? So for those reasons, put it in the C tier and uh, noted it's not currently um, used in any major builds So for the leaderboard. Okay, next up, Magic Wand or Holy Wand. Uh, so similar, uh, start with the evolution. It evolves when combined with Empty Tome. Also, I think we just ran out of music somehow. Let's try that again, Let's do this. Okay, so it combines with Empty Tome uh, to become Holy Wand. You can see its base stats on the left as well. It's base at 10 damage, standard area. You can, I mean, you can see what its area is. It's this little tiny crystal thing that shoots out. Starts off with one. It has one penetration, so it, it will, the moment it hits one enemy, the projectile goes away. Standard knockback of one, uh, maximum projectiles of 60, and it does get blocked by walls. As it levels up, it gains more projectiles, up to a maximum of uh, four projectiles, uh, at least from levels. It reduces its cooldown, it increases its penetration by one, and uh, it increases the damage, up to a damage of 30. Uh, when it evolves, it keeps the same damage, keeps the same uh, amounts, but it does go twice as fast, and the cooldown gets significantly reduced. So if you think about it, the base cooldown is 1.2 seconds. That 0.2 seconds gets shaved off at level three, and then it gets cut off in half again once it becomes evolved. Interval, similar to whip, 0.1 seconds. There's no real duration. Um, otherwise, it's the same. So the major difference is that the cooldown gets is that the cooldowns get extremely low, and due to the cooldowns getting extremely low, that's really what uh, drives the improvement with the Holy Wand and the fact that the projectiles move twice as fast. Nice. So, overall grade. Overall grade, I give it an overall grade of D. Um, so why is that? It does attack the closest enemy. That's its targeting mechanism. It attacks the closest enemy, which is both good and bad. It's good in the sense that if you are like nervous about getting killed right away, like this can help you to survive a bit from that. It can also like, sorry about that. It can also negatively impact um, you because by the time the projectile gets there, the enemy might be dead. It might have shot in the wrong direction where there's not a lot of enemies. Like it's very unpredictable, even though you would say, oh, it's the closest enemy. It kind of ends up being less predictable than you'd think. Um, what is quite good is it has a very fast cast speed and it has a very fast projectile speed. It has pretty good knockback when all of the projectiles hit a single enemy. And it does have one of the best accessories for combining. But again, the attack is kind of awkward and how it how it targets. It has very, very low enemy penetration. So again, at max of evolution, it only penetrates through two enemies before it dies. 
So you're not going to get a lot of damage out of it. It even even at max, like fully evolved, it's only going to do 30 damage, and it gets blocked by walls. So in my in my opinion, I think it's one of the few weapons that I would just not take in general, unless you're trying to do some very specific things or you start with a Melda. I would typically avoid this weapon um, for all of those basic reasons that I just stated. Um, also, why does why does this not keep playing music on me? All right, hopefully this just keeps playing music now. That would be ideal. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Moving on. Knife and Thousand Edge. Uh, so knives uh, get thrown out straight ahead of you. Um, there's a certain number of them, <laughs> uh, and that increases over over the the levels up. It gets evolved by uh, the bracer. Um, and base damage, 6.5. The area is this kind of length of this small knife. Um, speed is standard speed of one. Uh, it starts off with one knife. It only penetrates one enemy before it stops. Has a pretty low cooldown of one second. It does have half knockback, and then it does have an interval between knives with a maximum of 70, and it does get blocked by walls. Uh... As it levels up, it typically it gets a lot more projectiles. So you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five extra projectiles as it levels. Uh, it's gonna have an additional 10 base damage as it levels up. And then it gets uh, an extra two piercing, an extra two penetration as it levels up. Once it evolves with Thousand Edge, uh, it stays, it keeps the same amount of damage. So it's 16.5 base damage. Area is the same. It, it gets 50% extra projectile speed. So the Thousand Edge knives do come out a lot faster than the regular knives. It keeps the same amount, so it's still six knives. Keeps the same penetration, but the cooldown dramatically lowers. So it goes from one second to 0.35 seconds. And again, if you consider maximum cooldown reduction so that the cooldown um, is reduced by 70%, uh, leaving 30% left, that will end it with a cooldown of 0.15 seconds, um, meaning that oftentimes at higher, at high cooldown reduction, your um, interval will be like every three knives, it will already reset, which meaning means you'll have overlapping attacks. So you could have two or three overlapping thousand edge attacks all happening at wow. once. Um, other than that, it stays basically the same. So based on that, I would give Knife Thousand Edge also a grade of C, similar to the Whip. Strengths, it attacks in the direction that you face. It has a very, very, very high cast rate and a very, very, very uh, high projectile speed. It can have really good knockback on a single enemy. Um, you think it's only 0.5 knockback, but if you consider that you're throwing... Um, anywhere from, you know, th three to six to eight knives per second, uh, all of that adds up and you can get stutters that an enemy will just never get close to you. It's really great for being able to safely move in a single direction for a long time. And it has a really good accessory to combine with in the bracer. What makes it quite bad is it only has like quite average enemy penetration. So three enemies per knife is not that much when you consider some of like the waves where you're gonna have like dozens of enemies coming at you from all directions. It also has very low base damage at 16.5 damage. That's very, very low. You're not gonna kill uh, a lot of things very quickly even with max knives. And it does get blocked by walls. So if you're moving around obstacles, your knives can sometimes get affected by those walls, which is kind of annoying. Uh, despite that, I think it's a, still like a very solid baseline enemy, mid-tier, or sorry, baseline weapon, mid-tier weapon. Um, and it does show up sometimes in the kill leaderboards as a way to early on clear a lot of waves. I will say it's been outclassed quite a bit by Song of Mana recently, but pre-Song of Mana, Knives was like your best bet for getting mass clears on early enemies. You don't really see it in any other uh, leaderboards though. Okay, next up is Axe and Death Spiral. Um, so Axe, it's uh, the way it throws out, you throw it in an arcing direction. 
over, over the top of your character. Um, when it evolves, it turns into a whole bunch of axes that fly into all directions from the center of the screen um, in a kind of spiral direction out to the edges of the screen. It evolves with Candle Labrador, and you can see its base stats. So it has a base damage of 20, area, speed, amount of 1. The first level 1 axe, this is actually a buff that came out a couple patches ago, um, penetrates 3 enemies at base. Used to be that it only penetrated two, now it penetrates three. Has a four second cooldown, so it's a little bit higher than the other weapons we've looked at so far. Um, it has an interval of 0.2 and a duration of two. What that means is that each axe takes 0.2 seconds to go out, and the axes will stay on screen for a maximum of two seconds. And once the axes go off screen, then the cooldown occurs. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes, evolving it does lower its damage. Um, and so altogether, it's actually a cooldown of six because the cooldown doesn't start until after this two second duration is over. Which means that even if you got the cooldown down 95%, this duration of two would always limit how quickly your axes would get thrown out. Has a knockback of one, 35 maximum projectiles, and it does not get blocked by walls. Okay, so level up effects. First, um, you get more projectiles, right? So across all uh, level ups, you'll get two additional projectiles. You'll get an additional 60 base damage, and it will increase its piercing by four by the end. Um, when it evolves, several things happen. One, the damage gets reduced by 20. Um, which is right, it does. It gets reduced by 20, but the area gets bigger. It moves slightly slower, which is actually a positive in this case, because what's really important is the penetration. The penetration increases from 3 to 1,000. So it can hit 1,000 enemies before the projectile goes away. It keeps the same amount of 9 Actually, no, it increases, right? So it increases from three to nine as the base amount. And it is affected by additional amount, yes. The interval between axe throws significantly reduces from 0.2 seconds to 0.05 seconds. So you'll notice it does, there is a slight delay between all the axes, uh, but that slight delay is much faster when it's evolved than pre-evolution. Uh, knockback of one stays the same. Max maximum projectiles also decreases. So you remember I mentioned before, maximum projectiles is the most number of, uh, of a projectile you can have on the screen. At 25 death spirals, you will no longer do additional death spiral attacks. So if you do the, uh, the spiral death spiral train, you can have up to 25 maximum before you won't shoot any more death spirals. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, big note here, it has no maximum duration. So now reducing your cooldown is even more impactful because there's no duration delay and it has extremely high damage penetration. Or uh, yeah, extremely high penetration. So Axe is going to be our first B grade weapon. So why is it a B? Why is it better than the weapons we've seen so far? So one, extremely high base damage, 60 or 80, depending on whether it's evolved or not. Very, very high base damage. It has extremely high penetration. So it will kill basically, you can basically consider it almost AOE penetration. Uh, eventually it will run out, but it's gonna take a lot of enemies for it to run out of hits. It has one of the best accessories in Candle Labrador to evolve with. It's fantastic at both screen clearing and at doing knockback to nearby enemies. And of course, you can always do a death spiral train, which is super fun. Sometimes useful, but mostly it's just for fun. Uh, weaknesses. Before it's evolved, the attacks tend to be very erratic and difficult to control. So the axes kind of get thrown out above you, and it's based on where your direction is and how fast you're moving. It's like really complicated how the axes are thrown out. So it can be, like I said, really hard to control. And Death Spiral's low maximum projectiles and slow projectile speed means it's very often, this is one of the weapons that you'll commonly see 
gets capped uh, in the number of projectiles or, that are on screen. In terms of leaderboards, uh, this is the first one that is a meta leaderboard pick in the kills. It's not in every single map, but in most maps, um, you will see Axe. Used to be a staple because by default, everyone was picking Llama. But even when you're picking um, Pugnala, you still want Axes with her as well for most of the, the high kill runs. You don't really see it too much in the other runs. It can sometimes very rarely get flexed into like levels in gold but it's really in the kills that you see it the most often. Okay, next up. Cross and Heaven Sword. Um, so Cross does a uh, boomerang effect. It aims at the nearest enemy, goes across the whole screen on the boomerang backswing. Um, once it's evolved, the pattern changes, and rather than going towards the nearest enemy, it goes in a kind of clock pattern where where the the blade swings in one direction and then on the back string back swing swings off screen um in a huge straight line uh across like across the whole screen it evolves with the clover and its base stat is base damage of five one area speed and uh, amount it has AOE penetration, meaning it doesn't have a maximum amount. It will hit, similar to Whip, it'll hit anything that's inside of its uh, projectile will get hit by it. It has a tool second cooldown, so not quite as high as Axe, but higher than some of the other ones we've seen so far, and a 0.1 second interval between crosses. It has a standard knockback of 1, and it has 15 maximum projectiles on screen at a time. Um, and it does not get blocked by walls. As you level it up, uh, it increases base damage going from five to 35. Uh, it increases in its projectile speed and base area, and it increases the number of projectiles from one to three. When it's evolved, it adds a critical strike, so a 10% chance to do two and a half damage. Um, its damage increases dramatically, so it goes from 35 base damage to 77 base damage, and that's 77 pre-crit. So that 77 can also crit. The area increases, uh, well I guess it stays the same, it's increased by the same 20%. The speed goes up from one, from like an extra 50% to being doubled, so it goes to two times its speed. Um, it reduces its amount, however. So the amount goes back to one when it gets evolved, although that does get increased by additional amounts. And the penetration um, happens differently. It's a much bigger knife, so it, it it's a much bigger AoE effect. The cooldown also increases, and the interval also increases. To compensate, you get the big damage hit, and the knockback goes up to six, which is actually big. It's the, I think it's the single biggest knockback in the game at six knockback. So six times the knockback on enemies. Uh, the maximum projectiles reduces down to 10 and it then has that 10% chance to crit. Okay. Um, so one thing to note is that the, the initial swing of cross and heaven sword is affected by projectile speed. So if you get really, really, really high projectile speed, the Heaven Sword can actually swing off screen on its first swing, and then it swings all the way across the screen and off screen on its back swing, which is kind of cool. So it can actually clear both off screens in like a, like, yeah, a full screen sweep, which is super cool. Overall grade, I give it as a B. Um, the AoE penetration is really, really strong. Anything with AoE penetration tends to be much stronger uh, because you never have a limit in how many enemies it can hit. And the backswing on the cross is really powerful uh, with that full screen boomerang effect. It does attack the closest enemy. And in this case, I'm going to put that more as a positive, but there is a kind of downside to it as well. But compared to uh, compared to the, the magic wand... Um, the, I think the uh, the boomerang effect counters the, uh, the attacking the closest enemy in such a good way that it's actually just a straight positive. 
Uh, it can hit enemies off screen. It has very high damage and knockback. Um, where it does it is weak is it's very, very, very low damage when you first get cross. Oftentimes, especially if you're playing with curse, it will not kill the the enemies at the beginning of the game. So it won't kill them. You'll have to do two crosses at minimum to kill the very first enemies, which is kind of wild. Heaven Sword is not always an upgrade. So it's one I think it's the only weapon that I would say it depends when it comes to whether you want to upgrade it or not. Uh, the main reason why is the fact that the cross targets nearby enemies um, and has more amounts at once can sometimes be better than the benefits of upgrading to Heaven Sword. So in some cases you don't want to upgrade it, in some cases you do, depending on how you're playing. I would say in normal play you typically want to upgrade it and evolve it, but in like certain like kill leaderboards, you actually don't want to upgrade it. You want it to stay as cross. It also has a pretty average accessory. Um, even though that accessory does increase its crit chance, in general, adding more luck is not that great. Uh, where you're going to see this the most is in kill builds. And actually, I should have... This is incorrect. It actually does show up in gold builds as well. So in kill and gold builds is where you find cross most often. You're not really ever going to see it in levels or survival builds. Okay, next up. King Bible, Unholy Vespers. Uh, so King Bible is a, uh, it gets created and then it moves in a circular pattern around your character. Um, it gets evolved with Spellbinder accessory into Unholy Vespers. It's space stats, it does 10 damage, one AoE speed and amount. Um, it has AoE penetration. So meaning that the Bible can hit as many enemies as it can and it doesn't make the Bible go away. It has a cooldown of three. It has a zero interval, which means that all the Bibles appear at the same time. So they don't come out like one after the other. They all come out at the same time. Um, there is a three second duration. And then there's a 1.7 second damage delay. So the same Bible cannot hit the same enemy until after it's been 1.7 seconds. Now, different Bibles can hit the same enemy, but the same Bible can't hit the same enemy until it's been 1.7 seconds. Um, projectile speed affects how quickly it spins, or how quickly they move around your character. Uh, amount increases the number of Bibles. The area doesn't actually increase the size of the Bibles that much. It more increases how far out the Bibles are from your character, which has a kind of different effect. Um, and keep in mind again that even though the cooldown and the duration are the same, the cooldown doesn't start until the duration is over. Now, by increasing the duration, this is one of the odd ones. By increasing the duration of Bible, it the, the duration that is the delay is always three seconds. It's always three seconds. So if I double the duration to six seconds, then you will have permanent Bibles because the next one will start after the last one. This is like a really kind of a weird thing, but your cooldown plus delay is always based on your base duration. So it's a six second full loop, three seconds, and then a three second cooldown, and then it'll come back up again. Um, so that's why I say if you reduce the cooldown and you increase the duration, eventually you can have permanent Holy Bibles. Standard knockback of one, maximum of 25 projectiles, that almost never comes into play with Holy Bible, but it occasionally can with Vespers. Um, and then as it levels up, you get more projectiles. So you get an extra three Bibles. The base speed and area both increase and the duration increases as well as the base damage increases. So a lot of stuff increasing. What doesn't increase is that three second base always stays at three seconds between when the cooldown triggers. When it evolves, it increases up to, well, it stays, at, it stays at the same damage, still stays at 30 damage. The area increases by an additional 25%. The speed increases, oh, actually no, the speed decreases by 10%, so a slight decrease in, this, in the projectile speed. The amount stayed the same, penetration is the same, cooldown is the same, interval, duration, all that's the same. What increases dramatically is knockback. So knockback, 
gets uh, it gets four times the knockback when it's Vespers versus the regular Bible, which is pretty wild. Uh, it's why it is one of the best protective weapons in the game because it has such a high base knockback. The other thing that changes is this duration no longer affects the overall cooldown. So, <laughs> we just got raided. Uh, welcome. So, uh, yeah, so normally this three second base would affect the cooldown, so it's an overall cooldown of six, but this duration does not affect the cooldown when it's Vespers, which is why Vespers by default is permanent because every three seconds it gets reset. What that also means is that it's very easy to overlap Vespers. You will often see multiple instances of Vespers at the same time. So you can get double and triple hits uh, with Vespers because the Bibles are overlapping each other, which is kind of cool. Keep in mind it does get affected by maximum projectiles. So if you have Duplicator and you have like Mortachio, you could have a base amount of 10 and then you can't overlap more than twice because it would it would hit the maximum projectile count. Overall, I give King Bible Unholy Vespers a grade of B. So again, more like uh, axe level grade. Um, so why is that? One, you have this AOE penetration with a protective circle around the character. So it's really, really good at keeping your character safe. It's improved by every single stat which is interesting. It's one of the few weapons that does get increased by every single stat. It has very, very, it has very, very high knockback. So enemies get knocked back quite, quite heavily by the Vespers. And basically with all that combined, it makes you virtually unkillable at max level as long as you're standing still. Some weaknesses. Until it's upgraded, the low amount and the big gaps between attacks can leave you very vulnerable. So early on in the game, when you first get it before it's upgraded, it's not that great. It really requires those upgrades to do a lot better. And if you have high AOE, it will expand the circle so much that enemies can get through Vespers without getting hit if they are fast enemies. The other weakness is it just doesn't have that high of damage. 30 base damage is quite average. Um, so it's really not going to kill things that well that have like higher damage numbers, especially later in the run, but it will protect you from them. Current leaderboard use, you will often see it in gold and survival. It's not mandatory for either of them, but it's often a common weapon because in both, you typically want extra duration. So you're going to take Spellbinder anyway, and if you're going to take Spellbinder, it makes a lot of sense to also take King Bible to go along with it. You don't ever see it in uh, killer level builds, though. Okay. And that... Oh, nope, there's one. I think it's just Fire Wand left. So Fire Wand, last one for today. Um, Fire Wand, it shoots out uh, three projectiles at starting at random enemies and deals really, really high base damage. It's evolved through the Spinach accessory. And its base stats are 20 damage... One area, 0.75 projectile speed. It starts with three amounts from the very beginning. It has one penetration, so each, the first enemy it hits will uh, destroy the fire from the fire wand. It has a cooldown of three. So again, not quite as high as axes or Bible, but still higher than some of the others. It has a 0 0.02 interval that's incredibly low. So they all come out virtually at the same time. And it has a duration of 0.1, uh, which means that, um, how to say it, the entire the entire set of fire wands will all get shot out within that one, and then um, that's when the cooldown will get reset after 0.1 seconds. It doesn't have a huge impact, but just be aware that there's this 0.1 interval or duration after. Uh, knockback. One knockback, it has a maximum of 15 projectiles, and it does get blocked by walls. As it levels up, you're going to get base damage, a lot of base damage. It's going to go from 20 to 60, no, 20 to 90 base damage, because it's 10 per level. And then it increases its base speed, so it moves a lot faster. 
When it evolves, it has a huge change. So first, you get plus 10 extra damage, making this the highest base damage weapon apart from Pentagram. So outside of Pentagram, this is the highest base damage weapon in the whole game. It has uh, same area. It's slightly faster once it's evolved. Oh, actually, no, it actually decreases because you've increased by 60%, putting this to 1. what 1.35%, 1. and then it goes back down to 1 when it evolves. It also loses an amount when it evolves, but it gains AoE penetration, which is massive. That's where this uh, Hellfire really comes into play and why it's so strong is due to its AoE penetration. Uh, going from one penetration to AoE is like insanely strong. Its cooldown stays the same. Its interval then decreases. So the meteors that come out of Hellfire do come out a little bit slower than the initial fire from the Fire Wand, but the duration is the same. Same knockback, also significantly reduced maximum projectiles. So again, if you're playing with Mortachio and uh, or Mortachio or um, uh, Cavallo, the, the Panda Bear, um, two shots will already hit your maximum. So you can't have three shots at the same time. Now, normally you don't because the projectile speed's typically fast enough, but if you start chasing down meteors, you can sometimes hit uh, the maximum projectiles. And it's no longer blocked by walls once it evolves. Um, one thing to note is that even though the attacks are random, it is at a random enemy, so it will always go towards an enemy. Um, the enemy might die in the meantime, which can suck. Also, if there's only one enemy, they will all shoot, shoot towards that one enemy. Overall, I give it a grade of C. Uh, it has very high base damage. Again, highest single damage tick, excluding Pentagram. It has AoE pierce and low tick rate when it's Hellfire. And it has one of the best accessories for combining in Spinach. However, the random targeting is like really bad. It really makes this, hard, this weapon hard to recommend to people that are just trying to make it to 30 minutes. Because you really know where you really don't know where these meteors are going to hit, <laughs> which is a little bit of a problem. Um, also, before it's evolved, it has extremely low penetration. Penetration. It only, I mean, you're going to shoot three fires and they're going to hit three enemies. That's super super low. Um, and it's blocked by walls, so <laughs> it's it it it's really has a lot of downsides when it's still the fire wand. It really requires you to get Hellfire. Fire Wand at max without being Hellfire is just kind of trash. Um, and even with Hellfire, it still has its problems. Oop, sorry. Um, however, it does show up in both the kill and level builds occasionally because of its high damage and ability to kill uh, enemies very effectively late game. But in general, not the best recommended weapon. So that's it for part one. We'll cover more items uh, in the next part, or sorry, more weapons in the next part. Um, and for now, hope you guys enjoyed going through all of these weapons and my thoughts on them. If you disagree, let me know. If you agree, also let me know. And of course, if you like this, <laughs> if you like this kind of content, uh, would love to have you subscribe or like the video if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you for watching.